just as the uh, Polizia arrive, we're going to leave. And here it is, sports fans. Got some uh, swans over there, look. Flamingos and birds and ducks and stuff. Anyway, back to the job in hand. <laughs> You know, regardless of all the sort of old tales of MVs winning off-road races in the 40s, 50s and 60s, you know, they're renowned for making uh, sporty bikes. And this is definitely on the sporty side, I can tell you that already. I mean, just the sound of it is just, the quick shifter is very nice, the action's very nice, but the sound of the engine is, uh, yeah, if you're after an adventure bike with a, a naughty sound, <laughs> and of course you've got the counter oh yeah up there the counter rotating crank which uh sort of adds fuel to the fire makes it more exciting spins up quicker it's just larry you know you don't really get this with a uh, any other kind of middleweight adventure bike the switch gear as mentioned chris uh, he wasn't a fan of it and it does look a bit Montego Countryman slash Jaguar XJ in the 80s um, but there are some nice features you know got the ABS button here you can instantly disable and enable ABS obviously the dash I really like plenty of plenty of information it's not over complicated the switch gear is very intuitive uh, dare I say it it's very KTM not the not the looks but the the actions are very KTM and of course we've got uh, speed limiter pit lane limiter whatever you want to call it We've got launch control, and of course, launch control. Every adventure bike should have launch control on. Other nuggets that kind of stick out straight away would have to be the suspension. I mean, the sax, sash suspension. It's not the gold stuff, it's not electronic, it's not semi-active. But I'll tell you what, low speed damping across these. Anyone who's been to Sardinia will know the roads aren't great. And it's a perfect test for adventure bikes and this kind of touring vibe. But the low speed damping is absolutely amazing. I suppose the other thing, the uh, the blipper, I, I said the quick shifter was sex, which it is. The sound, the execution, oh. But the, the, the blip is not very uh, nice. But a lay by dogging. The other thing that's sort of slightly strange and a bit off putting, especially if you haven't ridden an MV before, is, uh, is the fuel in. It's not. I mean, it's very MV, it's very arcade. It's like it's like being in an arcade and playing a, a, a bike game. You know, the throttle's very disconnected, but you just get used to it. And it's, it's a trait that, I don't know, some people like, but a lot of people jumping on a bike from a, you know, a Japanese or a, another European brand might not like it too much. It's just a bit vague. I think that's the best way of putting it, a bit vague. I honestly think you've struggled to get this on a UK track day for the noise. It's, um, I mean, I tell you what, just by riding it on these few corners we've ridden, it's a very, very capable adventure bike in terms of handling. You know, if of course, you know, the throttle works both ways. You can be very lazy with it and it's, it can be lethargic and, and very simple, but the noise and just the way that crank spins up, very neutral I'll give it that it's beautiful from side to side I tell you what you can't feel this weight at all and you can't feel this weight even when you're static I know some of the little lads are struggling because they've got short legs but yeah I'd definitely like to take this on a track day for five minutes it doesn't like to wheelie I think there's some sort of uh, built-in anti-wheelie device it's off the throttle it's fine but you need a bit of a crest in second or it needs to be in first gear for it to be uh, airborne like i said that balance it feels like you know regardless of where you are in the corner or what inputs you're putting in it feels like the, both wheels are really nicely planted it's quite a weird sensation not weird it's quite a a rare sensation. Brakes are stonking. 
ABS isn't too intrusive. I mean, in summary so far, what MV have done is made a big fat supermoto that does touring. Something else that is a bit of a pain in the ass is when you turn it on, you have to wait. You can't start it until it's loaded. I know some others are like that, but it's just a it's just a minor uh, minor markdown. Let's open up some flaps. It's 24 degrees, Flappington Stanley. You know, despite all the noise and fanfare, you can just keep it in high gears. And uh, as I said, the throttle work, works both ways. And there's plenty of torque. You know, it's not as, obviously it's not as hard hitting as some of its uh, bigger capacity brothers, but or rivals, should I say? But it definitely helps having an engine brake into, uh, which is of course uh, adjustable. But it definitely helps having the engine braking in the in the short gears to help you finish off a turn. And it is, you know, it's a proper Dakar spec cockpit, and that definitely helps with uh, wind protection. Of course, uh, it's 24 degrees, and um, you know, I wouldn't mind a bit more air getting to me. But yeah, wind protection in general is good. I'm not, my shoulders aren't getting a battering even at high speeds. I know Chris uh, pointed that out on the video. He said he uh, it looks quite tasty. Uh, for the larger pilot I, I, I'll keep banging on about this engine is just got everything it's got everything in, it, in the locker what, that's one thing you probably can't hear that is the overrun when you shut off in the lower gears I just touch the throttle again on, on the neutral throttle just the gurgle it sounds like a bloody race bike okay so we're really adventuring now this is it let's turn TC off because I can't do what I want to do and that's a, another good thing you can change everything on the fly which is really really I really like you don't even have to have the throttle closed which is nice yeah one thing I will say though it's nice and thin between the legs you can grip the seat it's not like some adventure bikes where you've got a big tank or a big seat to contend with while you're standing up and it sort of mimics like squatting down and having a shit because uh, your knees are so far apart but this is a uh, yeah, quite decent, considering. I'm in off-road mode, so uh, the throttle is much softer. I almost prefer it in touring. That's it, incidentally. So touring is like the sportiest uh, of them all. That's, a, that's where you get the most power out the throttle, the most sort of direct throttle. Urban is next, and then you get off-road. But um, yeah, it's, it's, it's very soft. I think it's a bit too soft. I'd almost like to have a touring throttle with off-road settings. We've got a little uh, wasp that's stuck under the fucking button. Oh, sorry, mate. Oh, dear. He's not having a good time. Well, we had delightful coffee in La Fortezza, and uh, we're going to really set to work on apparently the nicest road in Sardinia. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, sorry, mate. I don't know if you can see matey's bike in front, it looks like uh got so many cameras on there, it looks like uh looks like the Arcadia Spider. Just having a chat with the lads over coffee and uh it's something we all agree on. If a bike costs nearly 22 grand, you kind of I mean look, it hasn't got semi-active suspension and uh, electronically adjustable suspension. And when you're jumping from terrain to from terrain to ter different terrain, then just having that luxury well it's not really a luxury anymore is it uh i suppose it would be on this bike uh but having that ability to just press a few buttons and soften it down for off-road and go back onto uh back onto the tarmac and stiffen things up again it would make the world a difference but like i said i don't think many of these bikes are going to go uh going to be getting too dirty off-road <laughs> I mean, we, we really could set to work here, but we're being managed. The pace is being managed somewhat, I think. I mean, from a sporting perspective, there's absolutely nothing to moan about on this bike. It's got everything. It's got the noise. It's backed up by the go. The handling's fucking awesome. It's got everything. The way it turns, the way it 
change of direction you just go how is this a 225 kilo dry adventure bike just fucking nuts but it doesn't wheelie I mean I'm not entirely sure that many people buying this bike will consider ground clearance a, a major issue or, or, or talking point when they buy this bike but I tell you what it's got bags of it bags of it these tyres are damn good as well these A41s I took them on track at Pembury with the Super Adventure and we were embarrassing some sports bikes so yeah there's the, there's plenty more in the tank sir plenty and just when you think you're running a bit wide or you're going deep just tug on the brakes and flipping out they are you know obviously with big heavy adventure bikes you get lots of weight transfer plenty of plenty of suspension travel and that kind of hinders at corner entry because you you know when you're riding like a twat which most of the time owner of these bikes won't be going this quickly but yeah a lot of the time you sort of jam on the brakes and the the combination of long stroke suspension and plenty of nose dive it doesn't it kind of hinders the brakes but these brakes are absolutely banging i think i'll go as far as to say right up with a right up there with the best uh, of any adventure bike i've ridden i wish your ears could pick up this soundtrack i wish the gopro could pick up what i'm hearing it's just phenomenal sexual i'm now stopping uh, for some luncheon at the uh, ristorante uh sala receivement festi private Villa Pia, Villa Pia Restaurante and of course we'll be giving you a full rundown of the uh, menu and the food on offer Monte Aruzu, Aru, Orozco Reles looks rather posh isn't it? not a bad little backdrop oh it smells delicious sports fans it smells absolutely delicious if you could scratch and sniff this bastard I tell you you're in for a right treat what are you, Chad? Five foot one? Oh, you're funny. No, genuine. How tall are you? Nearly five seven. Five seven. And you're, you're flat footed on, the, on there? No, not flat footed. Not, nearly. But it is quite low, isn't it? Yeah, for an adventure bike. Yeah. Well, we just had a cracking luncheon um, of some fine Sardinian um, sort of special dishes. We had a pig's tail on the platter. So yeah, well full up, ready for a nap. I mean, this isn't shit. Uh, what a way to recover from a pork come down. <laughs> I mean, we're not exactly hanging around here. And this bike just continues to deliver and deliver. And, uh, and I'm sure there's some of you going, well, this bike isn't going to be ridden like this. But well, I think you'd be surprised. But it's good to know it can. It's good to know you've got it in the arsenal. I knew there had to be some kind of downside to this uh, witchcraft uh, of a motor. Ooh, shit to know. Ugh. Obviously, it says warning low fuel. Um, and uh, with all this riding and revving and power, noise, there has to be some kind of offset. And uh, I guess it's a thirsty bugger. So the route is we've done today is about 220 kilometers and we're on uh, reserve now it says we've got 50 kilometers left Did you hear that then a little pop oh a little overrun gorgeous so if there wasn't enough to distract you on these roads we've got the uh the g meter on the dash gives you so you can see the throttle going and the brakes brakes application throttle application and then g-forces and lean angle so uh yeah really nice uh, distraction there when we're trying not to die anyway that's the uh that's the aim this is just naughty <laughs> i hope you can hear that <laughs> Watch out Charlie, watch out Ewan, 
because we are seriously adventuring now. I believe we've just been told that we have got the opportunity to ride some proper sort of a more off-road version uh, with knobblies and bash plates and accessories so let's see what happens <laughs> oh warning very low fuel nought kilometers am i one we're set free no idea where i'm going can you remember It's actually way better than I thought it was. Thought it was going to be, sorry. Oh, I've got a bit of a lick on now. A bit of a dab on. Ooh, shit, you know, that's horrible. That's horrible. While the Enduro Veloce surprised me off-road, it hasn't got the outright capability of rivals such as the Tiger 900 or Desert X. It'll munch fire roads and simple terrain for breakfast, even with the stock tyres on, but more technical sections highlighted its weight on the launch. Still, a bike costing this much, I'm not entirely sure I want to chuck it at the hedge anyway. We've got about 8k to the hotel and I've got no fuel left. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Well, I am on bike 13. The tension is palpable. You cut the atmosphere with a knife. By Jove, we made it. About 15 k's on the uh, zero kilometre. In there, it's really sharp. You do not want to put your fingers in there because it's proper ways of waddock in there. Could do with burrowing down. Another thing I've got to point out is the uh, this, this panel. And we are really proud of this. This is one panel, this whole thing is one panel. But normally manufacturers make it two. It's just a different paint. So it's obviously hand painted, red and the silver. I will say though, it's very neat. There are some, uh, apart from those sort of weird silver bolts, there's lots of neat little trinkets. It looks like a well thought out bike. And I love, I love this. I love this uh, trellis subframe. Looks a bit tricky, this uh, this little arrangement here, doesn't it? It just looks abnormally big. The uh, the bar risers look abnormally big, but seem to work. And we've got the Lucky Explorer grips. That's kind of like the Easter egg they've left over from the uh, original concept. As I said, I honestly don't know how they got through Euro 5 Plus with this. I mean, they must have paid off some... Uh, some people in the know because uh it's just you think most of it comes through the it sounds so raucous and an air boxy you know that, that sort of induction bark but actually <laughs> when you're following someone you definitely hear it well it's fair to say we've had a, a proper ride on this thing today and beside the kind of little groans we had to start off with as i said there's not a lot to moan about and the two things that kind of are really uh the major moaning points are nothing to do with the bike itself the cost is 22, nearly 22 grand. Now, unfortunately, when you've got bikes like the Desert X and the Tiger 900, direct rivals that cost considerably less, you have to really, really want this. You have to be part of the um, MV brand and sort of really fall for it. So it's difficult to build up a case as to why you want to spend this much more, this much more money than, uh, than the Desert X or the Tiger 900. And the other thing is dealers. I guarantee you, if I said to you, where's your nearest MV dealer? I think most of you, if not all of you, you go, I don't know. Now, obviously with the Pyramid Mobility Group uh, coming in and taking 50.1% now that they've got the, the major shareholder. So with all that happening, there is stuff happening behind the scenes. And we're told that the dealer network is getting a proper workout. So it remains to be seen. But anyway, I think I've rambled on enough. Uh, we've had a proper day and um, it's difficult not to like this thing, it really isn't.